actually had to switch to my phone because my camera's battery died but I'm just going to show you what I did to the wig to finish it off um, the most difficult part was obviously just styling the ponytail into that huge amount of volume but what I did afterwards was I made a very from the second wig I had um, I already threw it away so I can't show you but from the second wig I had I made um, very thin wefts by taking a piece of hair and putting that silicone glue over the top and letting it dry the thing about that glue that's great is the glue dries very quickly so you can just style your wig as you go on but anyway then I used those and I stuck them onto the wig with hot glue and just covered all those ugly teased parts and just spiked them a little bit with hairspray and set them with my hair dryer and it's like basically indestructible at this point <laughs> and for the front of the hair I just cut the hairline in a shape that I liked and you'll just obviously glue this to your head when you wear the wig so it's nice and flush and for the fringe I just used wefts as well and just glued them onto the wig see there's some um, still some hot glue that we're gonna cover with some fabric paint now um, just to man out the extreme shine of the silicone glue and stuff but that's basically it um, the hardest part about this wig is just getting the volume really and the back see you also need to, you also need to focus on getting enough volume for the side because it doesn't help if it has volume in the front and then it looks really ridiculous from the side anyway so i can't let the wig go because it's too heavy but you can see what the back looks like kind of it's kind of like a nautilus shawl shape i don't know how to describe it but it almost goes in a circle around her head and i just used also there's some weft glued and i don't know if you can actually see but I just um, used like the entirety of the second wig just to cover this ponytail to make it look all nice and fluffy. So I hope that actually makes some sense. And yeah, I hope um, this was helpful. So we're going to move on to the costume now. And yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start covering some of these shiny parts with fabric paint. So I suggest taking a piece of cardboard or paper or something and thinning out your paint. Um on that like dry brushing it a bit on so you don't have this thick like glob of paint on your brush because it's just gonna look gross on the wig um, you're trying to obviously get it as neat as possible because this is the hairline of the wig and this is what everybody's gonna see so you're just gonna like apply it in very thin layers until you're happy with how it's matted out and how it matches the wig and what we're basically just trying to do here is cover some of these um, silicone wig parts, uh, silicone glue parts, and a bit of the hot glue we used to stick this whole monster together. And that's basically it. Um, then you can see already with the paint on it looks much more natural. It doesn't have that uh, intense shine. So let's go quickly about what we're going to use to make our MoMA costume. You're going to obviously need a sewing machine. You're going to need um, old shoes. I usually use these for cosplay. It's not really the right style for MoMA, but I don't have any other shoes that I'm willing to ruin. Um, so yeah, the shoes need to have a closed heel like this. Otherwise, it'll just look really weird if you make a boot pullover. Um, then we're going to use a sharp fabric scissors, two-way stretch in white, tan, and black. And then I use red scuba for her dress i actually bought double the amounts i needed because i'm gonna make two costumes one battle damaged and one nice costume so it's all up to you then you're gonna need um loose cups or you can even like cut an old bra i usually use an old bra but make sure it's not textured because the texture might show through the fabric and then it'll just look really weird um you're gonna need an old leotard or you can make your own pattern whatever floats your boat you're gonna need some sponges for texturing and shading the skirt you're gonna need your thread you're gonna need some thin elastic you're gonna need a fabric paint that's a bit darker than the skirt that you have um and you can even make it darker whatever the case may be you're gonna need some hot glue and here are some industrial like welding wires i always use for my um bust pieces on my costumes you can use thick crafting wire, but what I like about these is they're very long, so you can make one shape and then use that one shape, which really helps, um, because your shapes don't get separated in the seams, whatever, you'll see exactly what I mean when I make the costume, and also you're going to need some 
padding. I don't know what you call this. Um, it looks really thick now, but you can actually separate it into two pieces so it's thinner, which is what we're going to use to texture Momo's skirt and her shoulder pieces. So let's get right into this. Okay, so I've laid out my red fabric on this table. Wait, let me switch the light on. I've laid out my red fabric on this table. I've laid it out so it's doubled so I can just trace the one shape onto the fabric. Um, very important, something I still forget despite how many costumes I've made. Remember to make your stretch go the right way. If you're going to make this costume, you're going to want it to stretch sideways, not upwards because it's just logical. <laughs> so please, before you cut your s fabric, especially if you bought it exactly the right amount of fabric you're going to need, make sure your stretch is the right way because it's something that I often forget, especially with sleeves. So just a reminder of that. What I've actually done now is just laid out my old leotard, um, or if you have a leotard pattern, whatever the case may be. Um, I've laid it out onto my double fabric and I'm going to trace it now. I usually trace it with a permanent marker, which isn't really ideal. Um, if I make more video tutorials, you'll probably hear that a lot from me. This isn't the ideal method, but I'm, I'm frankly quite lazy, so I just use what I have to that gets the job done. Um, but let's trace out the leotard, and then I'll show you from there. Trace my leotard. So as you can see, it looks really weird here at the bottom, but we're gonna sew it together, put it on, and see where we want to change it. Um, also, what you need to keep in mind is Momo has a a uh, high neck on her costume. You can draw this in at this point or you can add it afterwards, but I prefer adding it um, while I'm actually sewing the base of the costume because that's where I'm going to put one part of the wire. So I actually like making the high neck while I'm drawing my pattern. So we're going to cut this out now, sew it together, see what we need to change, and then look at where we have the base of our costume. You see, I've cut out my costume. It's nice and symmetrical. It doesn't look very it's a bit choppy, but we're still going to adjust this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to sew it all together, see what it looks like, and adjust it from there. So, uh, I used a small zigzag stitch to assemble this costume because we wanted to have a bit of a stretch. I also added a zip so you can actually get into the bodysuit. I'm going to put it on now and see if I like the way it looks. If not, we're going to start adjusting it until it looks pretty. Here I've cut open the back of Momo's um, costume, essentially splitting it into three parts. We're going to add a zip at the back anyway, but this was just to create the pattern that we're going to sew onto the costume. So we have a nice flat surface to work with. And if we complete this before we start doing the wiring on the costume for the bust piece, we don't have to worry about sewing after we've inserted the wires into our costume. So what I did was I took some paper tape, I put it on my costume, and I drew it out with some marker where I want my pieces to be. I'm going to take them off and cut them out, put them on some fabric, trace them, and just sew pieces like these for the costume for both sides. Obviously, these patterns are just going to be flipped. And once I'm done, I'll explain to you where I go from there. As you can see, I've cut out my pieces. Um, I'm just going to remove the tape now and give them some nice clean edges, and then we can attach them to the costume. Okay, so now we've attached all our pieces to our main costume. It doesn't look as good because I'm not good with sewing, but the silicone glue did help a lot, and it's much nicer than it would have been if I tried doing it by pinning it. Any case, now we're going to actually assemble our costume and insert a zip so we can see what everything looks like at this point.
So here I have my Momo skirt. As you can see, the padding we added gave it some nice texture, but it could still look more realistic. And we're just going to do some shading. Basically, what I'm going to do is I have my fabric paint here. And I'm going to use this brush, which is nice because it has a V-tip, so you can work into these little edges. And then I'm going to put my fabric paint on my brush, dab it onto the costume, and then just take some water and just like smooth it out in circular motions so that it isn't a blob of paint on the costume. Um, you can also use one of these especially on these parts and you can also just use a normal brush to kind of brush it out you can also thin your paint with water from the very beginning so you don't have to worry about it staining the costume especially if you've you know done a lot of effort on it or whatever and the registration mark we made earlier we can just cover with fabric paint so i'm going to go ahead and do that finished my boot covers but the heels are still black and I wanted them red so I just pasted or well glued some fabric to the heels of my shoes as I said if you have shoes you don't want to ruin I'll link a tutorial below that you can use for that to make boot covers but I'm gonna um, just end up ruining these shoes for other cosplays as well though they already look pretty crappy so if you have a pair of shoes that you don't mind ruining you can use this step now I'm just gonna take some thin craft foam and cover this ugly piece here and paint it red, then we have our nice red shoe and then our boot cover will go over this and it'll just be one nice red piece. 